Hi, how are you? I'm great. Good evening. How are you? Good, very good. Can you hear me? Yep, perfectly. Okay, great. Sorry, I think there was a snag in kind of connecting with each other. But uh, let me introduce you to our viewers. So today we have with us Mr. George E. Ramapuram, and uh, he is the MD and principal architect of a firm called Earthy Techs. And uh, Mr. George uh, is a, uh, I think, alumni of uh, Lawrence School, Lonavala, and uh, he's also uh, done his uh, management uh, from ISB. That's I think Indian School of Business, Hyderabad. And he's been practicing architecture, and his biggest inspiration is nature. And he he basically tries to design all his, uh, I would say, architectural products around. what he thinks is the greatest design which is nature so uh, it's great to have you today with us mr george thank you thank you i didn't get your name i'm sorry hi i'm nitin nitin hi nitin yes thank hi. you so so today's uh, topic of the day is impact of windows and daylight exposure in workplaces all right, right. so anything you would like to say about yourself mr george um yeah i mean i think you covered pretty much everything in the introduction so yes i you know believe that god is the greatest architect and nature is the greatest design to ever exist so all my designs are based around uh, nature and uh, natural materials yeah okay also i wanted to i just read uh, so your practice is based out of kerala uh, out of bangalore out of bangalore and but yeah. this earthquake stone lodges Located in Venan, Kerala is a project, or that's something that you started as an, uh, I would say, an extended arm of your firm. Uh, yeah, I mean, it is in Why Not. Uh, basically, we are um, uh, we we design and uh, build uh, uh, residences, luxury private residences, uh, which are one with nature at uh, Why Not. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, this this uh, project is an extended arm of your firm. Or it is a project yes. you're doing for a customer. No, it's it's our firms. Yes, it is an extended arm, extended arm of our firm. Yes. So the name Stone Lodges is the name of one of your extended arms of architects. Let's put it this way. Ah uh, no, it's actually the name of the project. Yeah, the project is called Stone Lodges. Why not? Yeah. Okay, great. So let's take it forward from today. So now my first, uh, I would say, question of the day revolves around sick building syndrome. and uh, probably you would like to know from you how did it gain significance and probably what steps from architects are taking these days to uh, you know kind of offset the effect of uh, sick building uh, building syndromes so uh, basically uh, sick building syndrome refers to uh, how users um, uh, experience uh, uh you know health or comfort related issues because uh they are using a certain space or a certain building so i mean it um, started to get um, get uh, prominence because uh, people i mean observe that uh, depending on the uh, on i mean if if uh, buildings were uh, let us say i mean poorly uh, lit or lacking ventilation i mean those sort of things it has a direct effect on the comfort factors of the user and also in terms of health related issues that were coming up so how today uh, can we deal with it uh, i think uh, the basic keeping the basics of architecture there i mean like i said keeping it one with nature right i mean basically if you can do your ventilation and your lighting basically um, if you can take care of those two uh, aspects uh, i think it it solves most of the issues but then if you can add uh, plants uh, that Uh, basically nature into the system and plants such as uh, those that that purify the air um you know there is uh, the snake plant which does that so things like that uh, uh, further uh, further the effect of not uh, having this thick building syndrome yeah so those are the okay. probably and uh, it's about keeping the basics right yeah okay so probably i'll brief it for our viewers so basically you started with pointing at uh, probably the proper lighting then the ventilation and yeah. you can enhance the effect yeah. of ventilation by uh, putting a lot of uh, i would say greenery around uh, uh, i would say yeah. windows of administration or around the building where the ventilation is happening so i think these three primarily yeah. 
uh, primary aspects uh, can take care of uh, sick building syndrome right so let's right. let's go right. let's take this one by one now when we talk about <laughs> uh you know lighting effect or probably when right. we talk about a building syndrome we'll be talking about an underlit uh building so so what are the steps or what are the right. various ways that one can uh, address this uh, under lighting problem so under lighting i mean i always uh, think that it's it's better to lay emphasis on natural lighting rather than artificial lighting so one uh, simple way to do that is to plan um, and i think we are talking specific to office spaces am i correct yes yes so uh, so yeah and offices specifically it's important to plan in such a way that the there is um, uh, the 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 amp- ample light is there for all the uh, spaces so normally what happens in, in in some offices is that the cabins are given towards the window side and the workstations towards the other side um, and and generally offices might have this um uh what do you say this um this limitation of having uh having openings only on one side so okay. when you have that it would be better to probably give the workstations on the side with the uh, ventilation or with the with the windows so that um, after the uh, workstations we can give the cabin so that both of them receive the light because if you give a cabin there and a partition at uh, on the window side then light doesn't flow to the workstation space so right. that is and, and 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 ventilation i mean and fresh air right so this uh, that is um, one of the basic uh, ways that we can deal with it yeah okay so probably you mean to say that obviously you are in favor of natural lighting as against artificial lighting but somehow it happens in workplaces wherein most of the places let's say cons- we consider that they are rented they do not have too much of an option to kind of you know do any changes with the given uh, i would say the place so there you are saying that rather than having cabins next to the uh, vent- places from where you can get ventilation you should have open spaces and the cabins yeah. on the other side so that both of them can be well you know ventilated now i have a personal exactly. question yeah yes. so let's take an example that you know we have a space where in as you rightly said we do not have enough uh, i would say ventilation space now is it right. possible to have i mean we have also seen you know a little bit of planters here and there which probably people keep in their office space office spaces but that's primarily to show greenery that's primarily to kind of you know uh, but it's actually not sufficient for uh, bringing in as much oxygen that probably is required to make the place feel fresh so let's take an example a place right. which does not have too much of ventilation but we do create while designing a very big area where we put natural plants which grow in any yeah. kind of i would say uh, you know surroundings so would that help or no a natural ventilation which would come out from the windows or somewhere else would be the only way to take care of it yeah i mean natural ventilation either either from windows or through the hvac systems air conditioning systems i mean th- throwing fresh air uh mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. uh in such a way that we uh, at least have there has to be some sort of circulation otherwise uh, it 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 yeah. is definitely not healthy and uh, another thing is uh that hello are you there yeah, i can hear yeah, you yeah okay so and another thing is um, i mean you were asking me about uh, keeping um uh 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 plants that grow anywhere i mean in all honesty yeah. unless plants have enough light enough ventilation it is sort of uh, difficult to honestly make them thrive in that environment uh, there are very few plants that that do thrive there uh, it's always better to keep it simple and keep it uh, as far as possible try to keep uh, a fresh air circulation that is going on either through mechan- i mean art- uh, first first option is always through natural means uh, the second i mean if there is no other option then go for artificial means okay so basically when we say artificial we are meaning passive ways of illuminating the place yeah i mean of course uh, artificial lighting or maybe skylight if you can give a skylight skylight is also another natural way artificial is basically through uh, electricity i mean uh, and and even the circulation of air through mechanical systems that's basically what i mean yeah okay so even if you have a, the... like in a in a tunnel for reason being i mean because the air yeah, doesn't yeah. Uh, move other otherwise they have blowers which uh, you know artificially help it move at least 
you know so in the long tunnels so where they don't have any other option they do not have an option to create windows on the side so they have these um, you know big blowers to keep air moving so that is um, uh, for tunnels but in offices yes you have to have artificial system which keeps keeps the circulation going essentially okay so so let's move on to our next question now uh, obviously daylight is composed of direct sunlight that all we all know there is something as called as diffuse yeah. sunlight and then there is also light which is reflected from the ground and surrounding elements right so uh, can you give yeah. a brief about how each of these can help and are important in their own ways yeah so direct sunlight uh, is basically i think um, uh, one thing about natural light is to ideally try to keep it um, to i mean to uh, like in india to keep uh, your openings towards the northern side right because we are in the uh, uh, in the northern hemisphere because of which the sun moves in the southern southern side so i mean to to avoid the direct glare and the direct uh, harshness of the sun to keep your windows on the northern side not light actually not light is uh, mm-hmm. especially Uh, yeah. great for for work spaces because it's glare free light you know it's uh, it's not directly uh, i mean it's it's uh, it's it's indirect or diffuse for that, for that matter i think and also in terms of diffuse i think you also uh, can get to using types of um, systems or types of uh, glazing which can diffuse the sunlight uh, even if you don't have the option of keeping it on the northern side right if you have to keep it on the western western side for example is the harshest sunlight in terms of you know at least in the evening time southern side mm-hmm. as well so i think if you have that then you have glazing systems that do cut off the glare um which again if you don't have the option of going for the northern side then do this and then because it's a problem to which you have to find another solution right so ideal situation yeah. is don't get into the problem in the first place try to keep the openings on the northern side so uh, you uh, spoke about the direct diffused and what, uh, which was the last one that you were talking about the light that reflects from surrounding uh, elements or ground ah right right that reflects from surrounding elements or ground i mean yes i mean as long as you have light coming in it will uh, reflect ideal situation try to um, plan in such a way that we are avoiding um, the harsh sunlight that is the and western side uh um, so that you're going for north light um, ideally uh, otherwise yes like i said um, and as long as you have light falling into a space it will reflect from surfaces and different surfaces reflect light differently so uh, you know it um, depending on how much uh, whether how harsh or how how bright uh, it actually is there and how high maybe you're going up from the ground versus if you're lower down uh you select materials that that reflect differently uh you know uh, reflect uh, have different reflective uh, capacities so that's the way yeah we deal with this so, so probably what i get get from you is that uh, one should kind of aim at having uh, north light why because we are in the northern hemisphere so most of the windows primarily should be planned in that uh, direction and obviously along with that the second line would be the east side and we should avoid southern and the western sides why because those will not be glare free i mean they'll be very sharp uh, but yeah. yes obviously they'll help you in winters in case you are in a kind of a, yeah. uh, you know cold, a cold yeah i'm i'm talking more relative to india uh, where where there yeah. are not uh, harsh uh, winters so i'm trying to say is that let's take an example now the winters are going to start where we are i mean north of india so from december until february even if most of the people would be sitting in their balconies which are more south facing why because the sun is there for a longer period of time and then that is the time where you want kind of you know to soak in heat exactly so, i mean unless that is the objective so that i mean i, I think um, yeah that uh, if that is the objective i mean you want to get heat it's a very cold place then yes i mean please uh, the, the sun uh, in the south side is uh, more i mean let's say uh gives more heat and gives more light because yeah, if you face yeah. it to the sun it is like directly facing it so if that is is your objective then that's yeah that you design spaces to uh, to meet your objective yeah okay. so also i would uh, let's take an example if we have a building which is south facing and that's the only elevation from where you can bring in light as well as uh, ventilation so there you propose yeah. that one should be using probably uh, some means of uh, shading let's say maybe a cantilever chaja maybe Absolutely. a stone jar i mean 
yes yeah. yes or 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 even glazing i mean sometimes these office glazing spaces you get to do only the interiors right i mean you don't yeah, get yeah. to do anything on the outside uh, they are very keen with the building codes and all that so yes okay. actually but what you said is absolutely right if you're building a building from scratch that is something that uh, that is definitely one of the solutions that you should go for a larger overhang on that side i mean so yeah that's how we go about designing yes we, okay so let's move on to our next question so any uh, thing that you can put light on any advanced systems of uh, kind of how to track uh, the sun or passively control the direction of the sunlight in skynet any advanced system that you used or you are aware of uh personally actually i i as far as possible try to keep um mechanical out of the building because that there are that many more points of failure uh and try to because uh, and try to select firstly i being an architect i uh, i get the let's say the advantage of building a building from scratch so mm -hmm. of course i plan it in such a way that we don't have to go for the mechanical because at the end of the day it is more uh, let us say expensive and mm -hmm. uh, more points of failure that come into a building because a building which has so many moving parts you know you want to keep it uh, yeah. to a minimum because that is what is good architecture i'd say because you don't have maintenance and things like that issues coming up in the future mm -hmm. but yes there are uh, i mean but 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 if you have that constraint there are so many uh, system now you have the i mean you can duck the light itself uh through okay. i think the yeah the duck the light itself for natural light which we uh, getting natural light into the space so through reflective uh, mirrors sort of thing so so there are many advanced systems honestly i have not uh, used uh, and there are there are advanced systems wherein you have like in qatar world cup now they have the roof that is moving right correct so the the entire the world cup uh, because the qatar heat the the entire roof <laughs> moves so so there are many advanced systems such as that personally because i think we have the luxury of being in india uh, where it's a, a tropical uh, setup it's not as extreme heat as qatar let's say uh, but yeah. um, and also uh, the fact being that um, uh, so so uh, that that i would rather try to keep away from mechanical systems as much as possible but where it's absolutely necessary definitely have to go for it so yeah so basically you are in favor of keeping things simple so as to it you know uh, and not very mechanical for people who are using the place also to have a very maintenance free uh, i would say yeah experience. because i Let's mean uh, the thing absolutely i mean because the minute you use a mechanical system then you know one day um, i mean as 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 simple as you're giving uh, i mean more chances of failure right at the end of the day as in something gets stuck on the track that is going uh, mechanical and then there is there, that gets stuck like uh recently i mean we were i was watching the world cup match and the lights went off in the, in the place uh, for a for a second so i uh -huh. mean yeah the more mechanical that we add into things i mean there are more points of failure the more we can sort of keep away from that i think that keeps it simple is what i believe yes and try okay. to go with the natural natural uh, things that are there yeah. so okay okay so we kind of now come to the last question now this is more to do with whatsoever we have been talking around uh what are the psychological benefits of actually having a well lit place as well as a well ventilated place so this is for our viewers to know so basically i mean i think um, very uh, very clearly i mean even research shows that um if you are around nature right i mean then nature begins with light and ventilation and then goes to plants and animals right but uh, Okay. uh if you are around nature it is it research has proven that you are more healthier right air is cleaner your 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 healthier as uh, as a um, a person so so yeah so i mean uh, i think it's a no brainer that uh, with respect to the 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 quality of of i think the your mind in terms of uh, the way you think the inspirational thinking will will be there i mean why do people meditate and do breathing exercises so that uh, you know you're uh, you're getting the uh, oxygen into the system right so and that that makes you think more clearly and then when it is not there uh, you don't think as clearly i mean i think that is there so and uh, health wise like i explained i mean inspirational thinking and in for the body health wise and i think um, and uh, you're able to i mean if you're able to add uh, nature into your systems into both externally and internally 
uh, basically, I think at the end of the day, you are giving back to Earth in that way also. I mean, adding to the to the greenness of Earth or to the to the ecologically conscious, uh, uh, you know, setting of Earth. And I think if you are able to use natural materials while even while in your architecture, what uh, that also helps. Like for example, I mean, um, when I say this, I mean when when you for example have an exposed uh, stone wall versus you have a painted painted wall right even even any any painted wall no i mean basically uh, there are paints that have ultra low voc that is vo volatile yeah. organic compounds that 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 emit yeah. volatile organic compounds so at the end of the day anything what i have observed is anything that is chemical in some way has a, has a negative effect on us so as yeah. far as possible uh, yes and then of course but you need to paint walls some walls for sure uh so there at least go for the ultra ultra low voc sort of paints uh but uh, otherwise um as a first option try to find natural alternatives to any any uh what do you say application that we want uh, so for example in in an office that we did even our lighting fixtures were made of uh wood i mean the uh uh you know uh small uh, pieces of uh, poles and then we made the uh, that so so i think uh, in in any endeavor we undertake we i think the the challenge or the or the goal should be to to basically find natural alternatives to the solutions that you're looking for so okay. and and that that will automatically give you a, a lot of uh, uh, you know benefits towards your uh, um, uh, the how you experience a space in terms of comfort as well as health wise i think yes so okay so george the how passionately you kind of answer every question really makes every one of us believe that you believe in things simple sustainable more close yeah. to the nature and uh, you know probably uh, no complications and straight forward yeah. uh, yeah. 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 it is it's great to be with you today so any last words from you on the topic of the day um the last words from me i think um i i if if uh, all of us can do our bit towards uh, moving towards uh, natural and ecologically conscious design i think we'll have a better world to leave for our the coming generations uh, so i mean i think in, even in terms of uh, the energy that is required to create um, uh, let us say um, uh, other 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 materials uh, artificial materials are much much i mean are 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 um, not helpful to the health of the environment i think okay. um, if we you know saving our uh, planet uh, or leaving it or saving it for the next generation i think the way to go about it would be a lot of us taking that initiative towards moving towards uh, ecologically conscious design yeah okay great so so i mean actually it was very great to be with you today and uh, we welcome you when so ever you are coming to chandigarh we'll uh, you know love to host your visit and stay over here and take you around Thank to you some so big company because those are also very naturally designed by him and when so ever we right. are in bangalore we will love to be you know visit give you absolutely you nathan please please do drop into our office uh, it'll be a pleasure to host you here sure. and as well as uh, it was it was really nice talking with you as well same here thank you thank you very much yeah. have a good day thank you you too. bye Bye